everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon, and a good evening. Welcome to the Spun Virtual Debates 2020 scrimmage for today. Our host today is Fred Becker, who will be managing the technical aspects of our match. Our judges are Tanya Sienko and Becca Steiner. Tanya Sienko is our judge from NSS. She is the CEO of Prairie Nanotechnology, is skilled at patent law, marketing strategy, trademarks, venture capital, and nanotechnology, and speaks six languages. Becca Steiner is a recent PhD in communication studies and is assistant debate coach at the University of Georgia. She previously coached at Wake Forest University and the University of Florida. Becca is a three-time winner of the annual Critic of the Year Award for the Southeast. And I am the timekeeper and facilitator for Roommate, and my name is Apurva. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort and not on any preset analysis position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement made by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Let's meet our debater. Team New Glenn, please give us your name, home country, and ethnicity. Uh, my name is Samuel Hoshi. I've grown up and been raised in Southern Florida and both of my parents are from Egypt. I am Lucky Bontala. I'm, I'm an Indian, and I will be the third speaker of Team Nubian. Oh, hello, I'm Diana. I'm from Romania, and I'm Romanian. Hello, I am Ratu. I am also Romanian, and I will be the first speaker of Team Nubian today. Thank you, Team Nubian. Team Falcon Heavy, please give us your name, home country, and ethnicity. Hello, my name is Mara Yanko. I'm from Romania and my ethnicity is white. Uh, hello, my name is Theodore Oyan. Um, I'm American and my ethnicity is Chinese. Uh, hello, my name is Logan Esselson. I'll be your fourth speaker for Team Falcon Heavy and I'm from America. And my name is Christian Verde. I am also from Romania. Thank you, Team Falcon Heavy. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participants icon. Please mute your mic unless you're speaking and only the presenting team and the judges should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Here is the format for our debates today. Each member of Team New Glenn will speak for two minutes taking the affirmative position. I will let the speaker know when two minutes is reached. After the affirmative eight minutes, Team Falcon Heavy, each speaking for two minutes, will give their negative arguments. After hearing their arguments, our host will open the breakouts for five minute conversations for team to prepare their summary and the judges to confer. The breakouts will close and the affirmative side with only one person from Team New Glenn now presenting their three minute summary. I'll indicate when your time limit has expired. Finally, one person from the negative side, Team Falcon Heavy, will present their three minute summary and I'll indicate the time limit if needed. If there is time, the judges may ask a question of the team. The questions may be answered by any and all members of the team. The judges will use their breakout to discuss their findings and determine the match winner. After five minutes, the judges will return to the common Zoom room to give their decision and feedback should time allow. Uh, sorry, I think after eight minutes, the judges will return to the common Zoom room. We have a hard debate session stop at 11.15 a.m. CDT for this room. All right, Mr. Becker, do we have only the judges and affirmative team with live videos and mics? Yes. Let's get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from Team New Glenn, representing the affirmative position for Resolution A. Money spent on space exploration is not justified when there are so many problems here on Earth. Team New Glenn, your first speaker may begin. Today, our team affirms the resolution money spent on space exploration is not justified when there are so many problems here on Earth that we need to solve first. The Britannica describes space exploration as the investigation by means of crude or uncrewed spacecraft of the research of the universe beyond Earth's atmosphere. Our first contention is that technology doesn't yet exist to make expansion into space practical. Werner von Braun calculated that the most efficient way to travel in space is by nuclear thermal propulsion, and NASA scientists still describe NTP as a game-changing technology for deep space exploration. With this technology, we could go deeper in, uh, from Earth to Mars in less than 100 days. 
space, while Viking 2's trip took more than three times as long. Space exploration isn't practical or safe, and developing the right technologies will be very expensive and most probably impractical. As an example, the engines of the SLS cost 100 million US dollars each, but still less than the nuclear reactor of the NTP that costs 10 billion dollars. The NTP is used only for outer space propulsion, by the way. From here, we can conclude that even our greatest technology can help us explore even the close corners of the galaxy. And further tests can cost too much money, even for the countries with the greatest economies. Money that can be used so that everyone can go into space and finance big projects that can have a greater chance of success. Not only Russia, the US, China, and nine or 10 more countries of the world. Let's imagine our current space technology is as an 80s van. We can try to turn it into a flying car, but it will most likely crash after 10 meters. Uh, but that's why uh, what we are doing in space exploration now. We are trying to build on outdated technology. The cost to develop the right technology would be too high to justify. There can be any progress in technological domains if we don't experiment and conduct test launches, but all of them would cost too much for the few countries that can do such experiments right now. And they can also generate economical crisis around these countries and the money that could have been used for solving the problems we have on earth would be lost. So to make space exploration practical, we have to develop each country of the world for being able to finance bigger projects than the ones that uh, we have on Earth. And in this way, even universalization will be finally Thank you, speaker. Achieved. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Team New Glenn. Now, uh, speaker two from Team New Glenn, you may begin. Our second contention is that investing in space exploration is simply not the best option financially. From decades past, failed NASA shuttle programs along with an international unneeded spike in funding for space exploration foreshadows what may come in the future. But this has not only taken place in America. Leading space powers such as China and Russia, according to the World Bank, have invested more and more into space exploration with an average of an equivalent of $8 billion, just second to America, with no true success on any account, as none of these agencies have completed anything that they have promised to their respective governments with proper timing with their investments. And not only did numerous astronauts die due to NASA's lack of proper technological development, but hundreds of millions in taxpayer dollars went to waste for a grounded program that ended just 30 years after its inception, when America expected it to live to this day and far beyond, with a budget to reflect that. Because of this, NASA rightly decided to invest much less funding into space programs on a factor of tens of billions of dollars, and has still achieved its goals. But dedicating more and more funds into space exploration would simply be too much an investment that brings too much risk in the long term. But since the death of the Space Launch System program known as SLS, NASA has not shown significant progress towards returning to the moon. Lunar exploration after the Apollo 11 mission has been pushed back since the year 2010, a decade ago. Between 2018 and 2019, NASA pushed back human spaceflight, lunar and Martian exploration from 2024 to after 2030. And NASA's significant budget propositions of increases of tens of billions of dollars reflect this. We cannot trust this program based on its past, and we cannot rely on this program for its future, as funding for it has increased at a risky rate, and it's similar with other national organizations, with some that have much worse environmental issues than the U.S. allocating their money less appropriately. We cannot be over-optimistic and impatient in space exploration now, when there are simply so many urgent issues to which we should allocate these incredibly large sums of money. From here, we have an impact. Losing this much money for a program that could end as quickly as it starts is a cost as, that we as a planet cannot afford as it clearly economically limits universalization. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 2. Speaker 3 from Team New Glenn, you may begin. Currently, many humans are struggling to live due to hunger, poor health, and lack of education. According to United Nations Food Agriculture Organization, by December 2019, estimates that 9 million people die of starvation every year and also reports, reports that over 820 million people are battling with hunger. And according to World Health Organization 2018, there are more than 1 billion poor and disabled people who need our help. Turning on education, UNESCO reports in 2015 that 781 million people were illiterate and also estimates in 2017 that 264 million children does not have access to education. This is their limit, potential, and therefore the potential of the whole world. These minds are rent able to assist us to solving Earth's problem. Educating them will make the world's future bright and serve the development of countries, a key factor of universalization. 
considering these global problems is not justified to divert resources to space exploration. According to NASA, the total annual expenditure of NASA is 22.6 billion US dollars, while the World Health Organization annual income is only 20% of that, or 4.4 US dollars. As we suffer on the world pandemic COVID-19, it is so the WHO would help us, but not NASA that will provide us a solution. And here as a solution to feed the hunger of the whole world, According to global giving the ORG, it would take close $65 billion to feed all the hunger. And to educate illiterate children, it would take $54 billion, and that would make the weapons of the world future and to develop the world more and more and further. And also according to BrojanProject.org, it would take $175 billion to end poverty of the world for 20 years from now. And approximately it would take $500 billion to end all the consequences of Earth. And after that, we can invest to do the full potential of space exploration. Thank you. Speaker four. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. So, we only have one home. It is here on Earth that we live, learn, and create. We cannot develop new technologies and prepare for life in space without our home. And the time is running out. The United Nations declared that climate change is a defining issue of our time, and we are at a defining moment. By 2050, if we fail to act, many of the most damaging extreme weather events we have seen in recent years will become commonplace. Once Michael Mann from Pennsylvania State University in 2019. In the same year, an article posted by Jonathan Watts predicted some of the consequences. Floods, heat waves, fires, coastlines will be reshaped by rising sea levels. On the ground, rising temperatures will change the world. Healthcare systems will struggle to cope. Hunger will rise. People will be forced to flee their homes. The poorest will be the worst affected. Would this help us achieve the benefits of universalization? No. Not only will it destroy the dream of universalization, it will also destroy the hope for space exploration in the future. Without our home planet, we will not be able to make any progress in technology and science or have a base from which to explore outer space. In 2017, Catherine Hale, a professor at Texas Tech University, argued against space exploration. As a climate scientist, I know that unchecked climate change will overwhelm civilization long before we are ready to push the eject button. Fortunately, this is not the inevitable future. It is highly influenced by our behavior, and we still have time to change it. Humanity must place climate change as a top priority, investing money into solutions so that we can prevent these tragedies and save our home. So, today, as we are facing technological uncertainty, the cost of space exploration, social issues, and climate change, humanity doesn't have money for space exploration. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Four. Thank you, Team New Glenn. It's time to hear from Team Falcon Heavy representing the negative position. Do we have only the judges and negative team with live video and mics? Speaker one from Team Falcon Heavy, you may begin. From the beginning of time, survival of the human race has often been steeped in conflict and figuring out how to dominate the land on which we live, as well as those who seem different from us. But through all of our differences, Humankind has always looked in one direction, up. Space is a uniting prospect, and today we ourselves are united by our shared goal of exploring and settling in space. The way that these goals will be best achieved is through universalization, which is defined as the next phase of human development, embracing interplanetary relations and much more aggressive exploitations of opportunities that lie beyond the confines of Earth. Universalization seeks to be inclusive of all nations, continents, races, and genders for the preservation and equity, not just for mankind, but for all of humankind. Today, it is critical that we continue to maximize our efforts in space exploration due to the financial and educational benefits, the inspirational elements, and for the very salvation for our planet overall with the end goal of universalization. First, universalization is best achieved when all humankind can benefit from the process. One obvious way we can benefit is financially. Space agencies that receive funds contract with private companies, which in turn provide wages to their employees. We can look at the U.S. for an example. According to Inverse, a news media source, we see that for every single dollar that we invest into our space program, we get a 7 to $21 back return from that in economic stimulation from contracts and spin-offs. Space exploration gives back to the world community the most. 
which is why it is absolutely critical that we continue to support and invest in it if we are to promote universalization. Now, here's Mara to address further benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Team Falcon Heavy. Thank you, Speaker 1. Uh, speaker 2 from Team Falcon Heavy, please give us your argument. Like Theo said, space travel has brought humanity more benefits than we realize, not just financially, but with research as well. The scientists in the 1950s and the 1960s didn't have the technology we use today, but the desire for progress was enough for them to invent revolutionary items and devices that, after they could be mass produced, became available to every one of us. This is a good example of how universalization should work in regards to scientific research. Space agencies did not give the discoveries for, for themselves. They actually let the population benefit from them. According to an infographic made by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, camera phones, the computer mouse, laptops, and wireless headsets were all created by NASA for their space missions. Now many people around the globe have them in their homes and use them every day. Besides, medicine was also heavily influenced by groundbreaking research in fields such as signal processing and material science. CAT scans, ear thermometers, and artificial limbs exist thanks to the innovative nature of space programs. Just imagine how hard the diagnosis of certain conditions without a CAT scan would be. These advancements wouldn't have been possible in the 21st century without the dedication and money invested into space programs, which is why they are crucial for humanity and is why spending money on space exploration best achieves universalization. When we explore and colonize space, more countries are able to share their goals and benefit from the experience as well, and everyone in space and here on Earth will have access to new discoveries that could significantly improve their lives. Here's Christian to discuss the inspiration that comes with space exploration, because after all, without inspiration, they, there can be no universalization. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 3. And finally, Speaker 4 from Team Falcon Heavy, you may begin. Uh, she was Speaker 2. I'm Speaker 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, speaker no 3, you may begin. Okay, thank you. Judge is ready? Okay. As Mara said, just think about everything we can achieve by exploring the unknown. In fact, space inspires us to dream big, and this has been the case for decades. Think sci-fi, for example, light speed, teleportation, other species. The unknown possibilities have inspired scientists and young children alike to shoot for the stars. That may sound like a kid's view of the future, but the idea of possibilities is exactly the kind of inspiration we as a global and ultimately universal society need. Although it may seem far-fetched, if we were able to utilize light speed, we may find alternatives for traveling huge distances, maybe discovering other species. Most portrayals of aliens in the movies are that, are that they are evil and they are threatening us because they found us first. But what if it were the other way around? We could approach them peacefully, talk to them, learn from them. It would help us realize we are not alone in the universe. And perhaps the Trekian idea of a federation would not simply be fiction, but instead an example of universalization moving forward. In 2016, Stephen Hawking announced a mind-boggling new project to send a one gram super advanced drone to our nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, using laser propulsors, which will make it travel at the fifth of the speed of light, making the trip 20 years instead of 30,000, a science alert report. Um, so we are not so far from success, but none of this can happen without exploring and investing in space. And with NASA planning to launch the Artemis project in 2021, her being Apollo's sister, uh, both men and women will have walked on the moon, meaning that both genders of the human race will have taken a step not towards the final frontier, but the next one instead. Therefore, inspiration to advance our technologies and our societies would be an improvement for the human race overall. Who knows, maybe the reason we haven't cured cancer yet is because the answer is not on Earth, but somewhere along the stars waiting to be found. Mara and Theo have only given you a glimpse of how investing in space could benefit all people. So we must come to the same uh, so we must all come to the same conclusion. The best way to achieve universalization, to achieve universalized inspiration is by helping each other explore the great beyond today. Now here's Logan to secure your vote by protecting the security of our very uh, the security of our very existence. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Three. Speaker Four, uh, you may begin. Okay. George is ready. Our final reason on why we must negate this resolution deals with the possibility of an extinction or near extinction level event. And if that happens, universalization cannot be achieved. And with our population expected to only dramatically increase, the effects that have continued to destroy our planet, 
such as global warming or world hunger, will only do the same in the future. According to the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, there have been around five extinction level events on Earth, all of which have ended with 80% or more of all species going extinct. In fact, many biologists believe that we are undergoing a six mass extinction event due to human activity like the destruction of natural habitats, deforestation, and contributions to global warming, such as industrialization and daily emissions, where it may be just too late to reverse the effects. Currently, more than 32% of vertebrate species are facing extinction in the near future, with the main cause being the destruction of our planet. And with population expected to exponentially increase, we must focus on settling a new area to colonize as a universalized society. According to the United Nations, the population in 2050 is expected to reach almost 10 billion and 12 billion by 2100. So we may not have a safe place for all of us to call home. Therefore, we must take the first steps to initiate these efforts, more specifically, space exploration. We must negate. Overall, if universalization is our end goal, then we must acknowledge our mistakes here on Earth and start with a clean slate. The best way to achieve universalization and the ethical evolution of our species is to continue with and even advance our current space endeavors, focusing specifically on colonizing and settling. Since space is universally beneficial, inspirational, and ultimately is our species salvation, we ask for your firm vote in the negation. Let's move beyond steps for man and instead focus on a giant leap for society. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Four. Thank you, Team Falcon Heavy. I uh, will now ask Mr. Becker to open the breakout rooms for five minutes to prepare team summaries and the judges to confer. Please join the breakout rooms. While we wait for them to come back, uh, coaches, can I request you to turn your video and mics on, please? Hi, Apoorva. Hello. How are you feeling, Tammy? I know your team just debated. Uh, how are you feeling about this? Um, I think they did well. I thought I think this was a really um, good round, and it was fun for me because I heard arguments I haven't heard before. So being the third time through on this, uh, you know, it's not always nice when you get to hear a new one. So. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> you, you've got Samer from my group. He, Samer is such a good, good kid, so I'm glad you got to know him. Yeah, he's terrific. He's going to be doing the summary speech. You'll get I'm to hear him again. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shauna, uh, Falcon, have you debated yesterday? Uh, how are you feeling uh, about them? They're, they were disappointed, understandably. We knew going in that that particular side was a little harder to win. Uh, it did not stop them, however, from feeling very let down. And I, I had to remind them that this is why, you know, uh, Tammy actually bought for us to have yes. the, the double elimination because, you know, we, we're aware. A lot of my students participated in the one back in uh, California where it was, you know, more so uh, heavily steeped on one side. And so, you know, I reminded them that we've come a long way with these debates and the, the effort that you and that, um, you know, particularly uh, Lorna, Jean, and also um, uh, Francis have put in have been, have been really good. So we see that. So overall, though, I'm impressed. I have to say with the, with the students from the other countries, the foreign students are in all of them, all of them are impeccable. And I think our kids have a lot to learn from, from the commitment that they put in. Yeah, I think we, we all learn something new every time we hear these kids. It's, it's very fun for us too. And uh, as the SPUN debates have progressed over the years, Shana has been part of them in some ways. Uh, it's, it's really nice to uh, reach the stage where we're doing it virtually, but a nine teams full of high caliber students. So it, it's very refreshing to see that. Uh, and we're all a bunch of space enthusiasts in some way here. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you, Mr. Becker, what personal experience uh, have you had with space program and why does this specifically come to mind? Can you say the question again? I didn't quite get it. Uh, what uh, space experience have you had uh, that comes to your mind? And yeah, why does that come to your mind? Oh, so I guess um, in the field of education, this is re reminding me of um, when I was doing science fairs when I was a kid. And when the judges would come and ask me questions and uh, interact, it was a great experience for me. And that, that helped me keep on track. Yeah, uh, I, I'm in the last year of my high school. And uh, just a couple of years ago, 
I was doing science fairs and all that. And yeah, uh, we used to do small, small experiments, but it was very fun. Uh, more than it was, it was more of an exhibition for us. Uh, I mean, the judges all were all very secretive. They wouldn't tell us uh, who's doing what. Uh, and sometimes they'd ask parents uh, who were walking past. So yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. And it's oh, still fresh. One more thing about it. It was very dramatic because, you know, you did not know anything. And at the very end, I won it. I was so Ooh. surprised. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was really uh, quite a thrill. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it definitely uh, taught me a lot about teamwork. I think what we're doing here is like a small packet of universalization in itself. Um, last time we heard a lot of the students say that, you know, they adjusted to the time zones and they've met new people and it was very challenging, but all the time very exciting. Uh, yeah, it, it's super exciting for me also to meet this uh, amazing kids and they, they teach me something every single time. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I I wanted to ask: uh, Have you guys ever considered this resolution before? Like, you know, is space uh, exploration really important? Like, have you ever thought about it before? I'll I'll just speak at first. Our school is uh, very much a lover of space. They were selected by NASA's CubeSat launch initiative um, twice in order to have their Cube satellite sent up. In fact, Samer on your team, Tammy, uh, his was the most recent selection. So he's in the process of building a satellite now. So we love space at our school, uh, but I think that not as much, we talk about all the time of the investments in space and we're super pro investment in it, but the second resolution, even more so, uh, more so uh, because we actually did a debate over, during our summer camp over whether we should do the LOPG or go to Mars straight away a couple of years back. So some of the students who are here, not all of them, but some of the students got to benefit and we presented at KSC on Hopefully that. They're part. coming back soon. Okay. Sorry, go, Tammy, do you have anything to say on space there? Um, well, I, you know, I grew up in the time of the shuttles. I'm wearing my shuttle earrings. So you can't, oh, if you can tell, I have yep. made a point of going around America and seeing all the shuttles. Um, I'm like a huge fan. I was a senior in high school, Purva, when the shuttle exploded in, during the school day. And they wheeled every TV they could find in the school into the cafeteria. And we all sat around watching it and all felt completely devastated. Um, so space in that way has been a part of my life. And I always, I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, which is the site of the Glenn Research Center. And I'm now on New Glenn. So I always assumed it was important because, you know, it was part of my hometown. And John Glenn was my senator. And he was one of the first men to walk on the moon. So for me, I never questioned it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have people coming back in. Um, Okay. Uh, I, I think we're ready for the team summaries. Team New Glenn, representing the affirmative position, please give us your three minute summary. You may begin. I would like to start off by restating and furthering our own contentions, then by negating the oppositions, then by evaluating the relative weight of this round's arguments. We originally stated that we can't develop new technologies and prepare for a life in space without our home, and that investing in space exploration is simply not the best option financially and technologically. The negation failed to nullify any of these points. It's still the case that investing in much into space exploration will not help economically due to the fact that we just simply do not have the resources as of now, the technological advancements, to do that. The first, content, the first contention of this speech stated that economics will pro provide benefit to both the nations developing space technologies and globally, but that's simply not the case. Only 37 of the 197 countries have actually gone to space, and only 90% of that group of people, according to Wired, actually hone space exploration programs, meaning that it would not be beneficial to everyone, and in fact, lesser economically developed countries that do not hone space programs would just be hurt even more and put at a greater deficit than other countries. Their second contention stated that if we were to develop and negate this legislation, it would bring humankind benefit with research and that many household items were made for space exploration. They completely did not consider the fact whatsoever that on Earth, we developed just as much, if not even more technology than they did in space, and that that technology was developed in the 20th century. We're at a much greater time now, and even with medicine, we've had much greater investments than what space did in the 20th century, and they did not account for the fact whatsoever that it'll be much more difficult for space to bring any kind of those revolutionary inventions in the future simply because of the technological advancements that we've achieved on Earth. 
They also stated in the third contention that we can make relationships with extraterrestrial beings through not uh, pri through prioritizing space exploration. But again, that has nothing to do with the resolution itself. And they just said that just you know think about everything that we can achieve by exploring the unknown. Before we explore the unknown, we have to explore the known. Our Earth is deteriorating, and it's at an extremely inconvenient time for us as a planet. And this legislation is pushing to pushing towards going to the now and investing into space exploration right now simply due to the fact that it would just help us in a very, very, very long-term future, which just even isn't the case whatsoever. In their fourth contention, they stated that the effects of climate change and near extinction events could potentially limit our abilities on Earth, but that's again also not the case. They stated and sourced population being an issue, but the fertility rates, according to the World Bank, have actually increased globally from 3.2 to 2.5 births globally, which means that population will probably be much less than what the negation proposed. And they stated that we should prioritize space exploration to move these people away from Earth. But the technologically most technologically advanced rocket right now can only hold 10 to 15 people in its rocket with 7.8 billion people on Earth right now. So overall, if we try and prioritize space exploration now, it would just be simply just impractical and unethical. I must conclude the summary, tying back to one word that I believe the negation did not consider well enough whatsoever in the core of this resolution. And that word is justified. For the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, justify means having or shown that having a just, right, or reasonable basis. The negation has no justifiable, justifiable basis right now, and they, all of their information is based off of inf Thank you, speakers. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Team New Glenn. Uh, team Falcon Heavy, uh, please present your three-minute summaries. Okay. Uh, judges ready? Yep. All right. For the clarification of the judges, I will first attack our opponents' arguments and then further our own if time allows. In the resolution that states result, money spent on space exploration is not justified when there are so many problems here on Earth that we need to solve first. Our opponents on the affirmation propose four main arguments that we will refute and negate. To elaborate on the first point, our opponents stated that according to Van Braun, we do not have the practicality and money to work towards space exploration. However, this is clearly false because without the budget, we will not be able to develop this technology. Currently, nations around the world are attempting through using their space exploration budget to develop a working rocket that will visit and land on the moon. We are making strides in this year for space exploration and by eliminating this budget, we will devolve as a society and as act as a step down from universalization, which therefore eliminates the support for their first point. In their second argument, our opponents propose that the investment in space exploration is not necessary and will be useless because of the delayed technological development. However, their argument is flawed because most technologies that come from space exploration and the development of technology in lower Earth orbit are actually a much better investment than not going to space at all, with numerous technological spin-offs that my partner has stated to be an investment return of more than 700%. If we explore, we can also work towards solving problems on Earth as well, considering that we actually profit from space, which therefore nullifies their second contention. In their third contentions, our opponents stated that problems, including education and hunger, are more important and need to be emphasized over space. However, this argument is false because not only do we have spinoffs that we are able to actually turn into a profit, if we get rid of all countries' space budget, how do we find the inspiration and universalize without space in the picture? If we were to eliminate all space pro exploration programs' budget, we wouldn't even come close to reaching the $265 billion mark that the affirmation proposes, which therefore nullifies their third contention. And their fourth and final contention, our opponents brought up the idea of climate change being a major problem over exploring in space. Although this is flawed because while there is logic in our opponents' arguments, they provided zero examples of this actually occurring in the future and only provided hypothetical scenarios. With space in the horizon, it may be possible to work more in space to gather resources and less on Earth in order to reduce fossil fuel emissions and therefore climate change which therefore nullifies their final contention. Also, in the negation, the affirmation rebuttal, our opponents also said that 37 countries have space exploration programs. However, this is the very reason why we must negate, as we need to develop our space programs throughout all countries. And by, by affirming this resolution, you are undermining other countries and their space programs. Now that I have successfully nullified their contentions, I will now further our own. Think about this. The reason why we are all here today debating on a Zoom call is because of space. Think of the satellites that we put up and the benefit of internet and communication for them. And for these reasons, we must negate because the affirmation does not comprehend how we will evolve as a society through space exploration and universalization. Thank you. Thank you, Team Falcon Heavy. 
Uh, I think we have time for the judges to ask questions of the teams. Just a gentle reminder, both teams must be asked the same number of questions each. So over to you, judges. Okay, our first question is for the affirmative team, New Glenn. So our first question is, it seems like both teams agree that climate change is a big problem. The negative team says it's sort of too late to adapt and we should have a clean slate and colonize another space. What do you as the affirmative team think is our reason to have faith that we can fix problems like global warming on earth and that it's not too late? Well, again, start off uh, enforcing the negations on words. They're clearly relying on hypotheticals in this case. The fact that they sort of, oh, they're over pessimistic on how we can react to climate change and they just sort of resorted to the one opinion that we must leave now. It's sort of just underappreciative of the technological advancements that we've achieved on earth and the major effort from all nations to universalize and concert themselves towards this one effort of trying to save the planet that we all live on from higher to lower and lesser economically developed countries. The entire goal of this has been to universalize and they would just simply get rid of that goal and give up in a way for our opinion on our opinions of the general planet. And they would try and just leave earth again with a completely impractical opinion on saying that we could just send everyone from earth to space. But that's just simply not the case. And I really believe that the technological advancements that we've achieved would help us more than hurt us and that we should try and prioritize saving the planet that we live on now just because we have so many people and that there are so many untapped resources and untapped potential that the earth still has to help every single American and global citizen just everywhere. Also, I think I can have a completion in this. Uh, we, it takes about 100 days to take 10 to 15 people from earth to Mars. That is the closest planet. How do, you want, how do we want to transport and colonize another planet when we only have the resources to take at least at most a city from the entire planet until the climate change will become very, very bad? I think that we should mostly focus on how to solve this problem on Earth before t thinking about leaving Earth because it won't be practical and the entire human race can be erased like it have never been here. And again, yeah, we're not in a near extinction event as the negation tried to source. The near extinction events, the five that they sourced prior were from centuries and even millennia ago. So it's definitely, we're not anywhere close to those mass extinction or near extinction events that were experienced before. And there's definitely a chance as Radu was saying that we can develop and work on what we have here on earth while still being able to consider space, but being able to just prioritize and work on our priorities as a global power to work on trying to fix the issues that we have on Earth, which include climate change, poverty, education, etc. And I would finally conclude, just, just a minute, I just, I just finally want to conclude that climatic change, that we can make a better, better climatic change when now compared to Earth. Because, you know, due to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there was a huge ozone hole in the Antarctic. But due to the uh, global lockdown, we did not pollute the air, and we took our right precautions, taking out resources like food and water, and that hole was covered up. And almost 50% of ozone layer, which dispersed due to CFC, has covered. And we can still repair Earth instead of going to space. As my mates told now, it is impossible to take 7.8 billion people emergency. Okay, I have a question, and this is for the negative side, um, which again is, is following on the, the points which have been raised, which is, uh, okay, you can, if we are to go out into space, how are we going to get people there, given that, as said, you only have a, you're not, we're not going to be able to move the population. Would anyone like to take a shot at that? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll answer that. So what we have, if we look in the past, like what the, the, the centuries, like in the past century, we've gone from not even being able to fly a plane to sending, you know, humans to the moon. And if we look forward to, you know, the 2050s, 2060s, 2070s, 
what technology will we have then to you know send humans to the moon or mars or even beyond and that's what is truly our inspiration for negating this resolution because if we eliminate our space exploration programs we are actually de-evolving and you know not even exploring the, the possibilities of you know the unknown the next frontier and if we eliminate the next frontier how we even reach the final frontier which is uh, universalization thank you very much I think we have time for another question, if the judges have any. Um, no, I think we're, <laughs> I think we're fine as is. <laughs> Unless okay. my other... Uh, then... No. Okay, so the judges will now go to their breakout to discuss their findings. And I think uh, you guys will have an eight minute window. Okay. Can everybody please remain, all the team members, please remain in the main room. I'm going to open all the breakout rooms here. So let me set the time on this too. all the students need to remain in the main room I will broadcast to invite them back yeah okay while we wait for them um, Theo I, I want to ask you uh, how different is today's experience from yesterday's when you began the debate yesterday um, it's very different uh, especially because we're taking a different side from uh, yesterday's side and uh, because we worked a lot on these arguments it's uh, interesting to see how the arguments I'm presenting today are in contrast with my arguments from yesterday. I think that might have worked in your favor. You could anticipate what the other side will tackle you with. So that's yeah. definitely interesting. Hello. Hello. So, yeah. Um, I was just asking how was today's experience uh, compared with the, the beginning of debates yesterday. Well, uh, uh, firstly, oh, yes. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I mean, for, for me, I mean, yesterday we did start off our first ever tournament with a loss. But I mean, I think the way that we were able to, you know, all our team, our, our team really just, we went through this with passion. And the fact that we're here today, we were just so, you know, passionate for this resolution that we just decided, you know, we really just can't let this happen. We were just we were having so much fun with it just because of from you know what we've learned prior. We just had so much fun developing our arguments and we just put in our all today and trying to get you know to get us back up there and to uh, you know just try and keep us all passionate. But again, it's a team effort and no matter what happens, we are just you know grateful to be here and it's just been a fun experience for me personally. Yeah, and I just want to add us you guys have been so fantastic. And I, I want to say, uh, as you said, no matter what happens, we are all winners here because what we have done today is an, uh, you know, an educative step. A lot of people who may have never considered this before will probably think, think twice and maybe say, oh, how, how about the problems on Earth? Should we just keep draining funds into space? Or this, this definitely will give people a second thought. So you guys have done a fantastic job, a job on that. And, and uh, I would... Yeah, please go. I'm sorry yes. to interrupt. No, continue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what I really want to say is like before, you know, like getting this debate on like, uh, like you guys have uh, really think of, you know, taking humans to space, making universalization. But we must also understand one thing here, like debating right now is what we're doing universalization. Like right now we are doing universalization because, you know, like the more people from India, Romania, uh, uh, America and people are coming and discussing that uh, of our homes in space. I think that is really wonderful. So um, here, here's a question I want to throw out to everybody. I, I hope everybody will say something for this. So let's move forward 200 years. Uh, what job could you imagine yourself in that world supporting a space faring civilization? It could be anything. I want to hear something from everyone here. I think 200 years from now, 
Like I won't live that long, I guess. Uh, if you were in that era, what job would you pick? Oh, okay, okay. Me, uh, sincerely, you know, at that time, it's all about like we live in space, and right now, I want to be an astronaut, and there, I can't be like I, I, I would be uh, like more, you know, interested to explore not in only in our solar system to go explore beyond our solar system and to you know explore alien life or something. So I would really like be so excited with, to be an astronaut of next level to explore a galaxy instead of a solar system. I would be an astronaut again. <laughs> I would like to be one of the engineers behind the design of the settlement. Uh, the people working behind the scenes to make it work. Either that as an engineer, or I'd like to be one of the uh, lawyers or part of the judicial system that are making sure that there's actual peace and justice um, in a spacefaring society. I, I would personally, because uh, I also have a passion towards the area of medicine, so I would most likely want to uh, try and you know, develop my passion towards biomedical engineering and space medicine and that you know, newly developed field is that will most likely take a large step forward as we get onto the Martian surface. But if not that, I would just be, being a part of that process would just be fine with me either way, but I would probably want to either concert my passions towards space medicine and Martian medicine or towards aerospace engineering, like what Theodore was saying. So I, uh, I'm a really big math person and I, I would see myself, you know, being, uh, I guess, you know, in charge or not in charge, but just, you know, working towards um, trying to find out what, how much fuel a rocket would need to take off or like, you know, how we will be able to like rendezvous with uh, other like rockets or, you know, satellites. But I feel like that, that would just be, you know, really great because I have, like a passion for aerospace and math and you know being able to combine those two would be you know great to see that in you know 200 years so i think i'd like to be an inventor because i think that we are i i feel like we are on the verge of making a breakthrough i don't know where i don't know what but somewhere in the next 100 years we will make that big breakthrough and that will open whole new horizons for other inventions that will, I don't know, uh, change everyone's perspective. Uh, can I, hear I'd from, like to help with that. Yeah. Can we hear from Diana, Radu, and Mara, please? Well, oh, yes. I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you can go ahead. Okay. It's okay. So. I, will, I see myself working with nuclear power, so maybe on a next generation power plant or something like that. <laughs> well, well, I would like to be a physicist. That is actually my goal right now, to become a physicist. And like we have a theory of everything in sight and I would really like to see that. And we'll, we'll probably have it uh, 200 years from now. So that's it. Radu? Well, thinking that we are talking about 200 years from now, we will still have jobs. Because <laughs> right now I see that the technology is evolving very much and pretty much I guess that until then robots will take our place in a lot of situations. But if that won't happen, and I pretty much hope that it won't happen, I'm not very passionate about having robots all around me. <laughs> I think that I will be in the part of engineering. I'm very passionate about this, and I don't know. I will try to figure out how to make the things, I don't know, bigger, stronger, and faster. <laughs> to be sure that we can go even deeper into the universe, deeper than we, want, we went now, and then uh, how deep we will go until then. Thank you guys. Uh, those are all very cool to hear. Um, I, I know New Glenn was just on the negative side in the previous round. And um, I know you've all uh, um, been on one of the sides by now. So I want to ask you, how difficult was it, considering we're all space enthusiasts here, to consider the F position? I know a lot of you said we should be in the middle. But yeah, sure, Samir, go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I mean, 
definitely the shift from the negation to the affirmation, at least personally to me, again, being like a, you know, sort of a space nerd in this scenario, it was definitely a little bit difficult for me to shift to that type of mentality. But again, I also, I'm, I was a part of the debate program at my school. So I'm really passionate as well for arguments and well, not arguments, but just debates in general. And I was just, I'm passionate towards trying to weigh arguments and trying to find which is better than which. And that was just sort of what took over. And I just had a lot of fun with that. But I do think that, you know, space exploration is incredibly important. But again, there was definitely some very important contentions on the affirmation that I agreed with as well. But overall, like you said, it's sort of in the middle, but I just, I had fun debating both sides either way. Thank you, Samir. So I see the judges have returned. I think we're all very anxious to hear from you guys. Um, I just want to say, can we hear your feedback first before we hear the winner, please? Over to you. Um, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Um, both sides, I would say, are extremely, were extremely well prepared, as I would have expected from this group. And uh, the one thing that I think that the, uh, the um, negative side did uh, better than the affirmative side was that they put a, uh, a definition of universalization in the first speech and they basically um, made sure that the concept was well understood. Uh, the first, the affirmative side had, had the words, but there was no real definition or explanation of it. Um, the other thing I would like to mention is that the second, uh, the second group, the negative team, did a very, very, very good job of the handoff, the explanation of what the next person was going to say and the handing off to them. And uh, I would say thumbs up, definitely. So now I'm going to give, um, turn the whole thing over to my fellow judge. Some of the other I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but yeah, can we have everybody's videos on please? Um, uh, Lucky, can you turn your video on? Yeah, sure, go ahead, Ms. Diana. Some of the other feedback that I wanted to point out or echo what's already been said are for the negative team, we thought it, you, dealt, you all did a very good job discussing the concept of universalization, introducing the next speaker in the first four speeches. I thought the volume was very good. I thought one thing to improve on for the content of the first four speeches is to increase some eye contact. I know that is a little hard since the first four speeches you already mostly have prepared. So there is some reading happening, but maybe more efforts at eye contact would be helpful. And when you bring up pieces of research, it would be helpful to include always the published date for when that research is from, because some of these questions, the recency, they're all credible sources you're sharing with us, but sometimes that how recent is it question could become really important. For the affirmative team, some of the things that we thought you did really well are um, good hand gestures, I think expanding on the previous speaker in the first four speeches, you all did really well. There was a lot of good outside research presented in the first four affirmative speeches. Um, some things that maybe to improve on. If I was the affirmative team debating and you have four teammates, I might have made the first two speakers discuss the major problems on earth and then the third and fourth speaker discuss the reasons why space exploration might be bad or impractical or cost a lot of money that way a person looking at this topic or resolution their first question is what are the biggest problems on earth so i might have arranged the content in the four, first four speeches a little differently. And again, the same comment I gave to the negative team with when you share the sources of research, they're all very credible sources, but it would be helpful to include the published date by either the year or the month so that we know 
when is that piece of outside research from that could become important. Okay, those were the comments and feedback we had. So now I'll discuss how, what we decided for the victory. It was a very close debate. We thought after the first four set of speeches, the debate was really neck and neck, very close. Uh, we ended up deciding unanimously that the affirmative team knew Glenn won this debate. The primary reasons that we thought were because if it is true, the extinction event of overpopulation is a thing that may not be fixed by space exploration because the technology is inadequate so far. And the idea that we will have the technology in the future is a little too optimistic and was not supported by enough evidence. Another reason we decided to vote for the affirmative team is because we thought we had more faith that these problems on Earth are a really big deal and all were supported by a lot of research. That's how we arrived at a decision, although we thought the debate was very close and considered voting uh, negative a few times because of how much the negative team spoke about universalization, and we thought that was a really strong point by the negative side. And, and if I can, um, may add um, to my fellow judges' comments, uh, it was the negative side talking about uh, space development and the effect that space development or the effect that just the push of space development towards um, the belief and the uh, of creating idealism was very strong and uh, something definitely not to be ignored. Um, I would say that the where the um, negative team sort of went down the rabbit hole was when you brought up overpopulation <laughs> and then the sort of like the cascade that followed on from that but as said both sides did a very very good job thank you very much um i just uh, as i was saying in the previous breakout when the judges were gone we are all winners here because what we have accomplished today is uh, you know keep putting that thought in people's head on whether space exploration is really important and a lot of people will, you know, question themselves on why there are so many problems on earth. Should we just drain all the money into space? So we have all done a fantastic job. Congratulations to both team New Glenn and Falcon Heavy. Everybody unmute your mics and a big round of applause for both the teams. Thank you everyone once again who have made this match possible. Uh, just a couple of things before we wrap up here. Teams, um, as a quick reminder, Team New Glenn will proceed to room 12 Sunday at 8 a.m. CDT. A kind request to judges, please hold on to your adjudication sheets until the end of the Spun Virtual Debates Tournament. We may need to see them later. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your morning, your afternoon, or your evening. Thank you for participating in the May Tournament of the Spun Virtual Debates 2020. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.